can't complain. Still unbeaten. Going into the international break. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't too confident for this game against Spurs. Considering we haven't really clicked yet. In the Newcastle way that we know. The starting lineup. Only one slight surprise for me. That Lewis Hall didn't start. But Lloyd Kelly did okay. And he got the assist. Good assist. Newcastle win 2-1. Talk about smash and grab, but credit to us for riding the storm, especially in that second half. Spurs were peppering us. Let's not get it twisted. Peppering us, and they still didn't score a goal. So they got a goal because of Dan Burns' unfortunate on goal. And we're going to get on to that. Joe Linton had a stinker in the last, not the last game, but the last Premier League game. He's come back. I like the way he brushed off Rushed off Madison. Good vision to give that pass to Murphy. Because Spurs play a ridiculously high line. And he's just going to... That's just the way he is. As he always says, that's the way they play. Good for us. He ain't learned from coming to us. That's like what? Overall, that's 12-2 on aggregate in the last three games at St. James's Park where we played Spurs. Beautiful quick ball to Murphy. I'm glad he wasn't greedy. He passed it to Isaac and he scored. And we had a similar moment in the game where Isaac had the ball and he was indecisive whether to shoot or pass. And I thought that was that was gonna come back to haunt us. And it nearly did. Spurs got the equalizer. Let's keep it a hundred. For me, I couldn't care what anyone says. Nick Polk can make some great saves and he made a beautiful stretch and a hand to the shot by Madison in the game. But Nick Pope is suspect. I'm going to keep calling it out. People will say, who would he put in Golden? Call me crazy. I'd rather put the Bravka. Because there's too many moments. Paul, yes, great shot stop hard. We say he's not great with his feet. We all know that. It is what it is in that sense. But now you're not catching when he's supposed to catch. Certain shots are being had. Yes, it's easier said than done. I'm not on the pitch. But from looking at it, even that goal, the own just before the the well, led to the own goal, Pope man, you can catch that. When it's supposed to catch, you don't catch. Then you parry sometimes. When you're parrying, you're not supposed to parry. It's like, come on. I said it in the last few games. I said those moments are going to cost us, and it could have cost us in this game. Even though Spurs were peppering us, it's that moment we could have grand out for one 0 win, but I got the equalizer. Is suspect. He can't kick the ball. He can't catch the ball. Yes, he's come out from injury, but that can't be an excuse. If that's the case, don't. Then he can't be playing him. But it's a catch player too. He's a great shot stopper. So what do you do? You just have to balance it and say, you know what? We're not going to get that from Pope. But it's, for me, it's a tad concerning. Yes, we won the game, so no one cares about that. When it's moments where that can cost us points or to even just lose the game completely. Believe you're gonna have some questions, but I'm not gonna to be too negative because, as I said, we won the game anyway. Smash and grab for me, not playing well, still unbeaten. That's key. So hopefully, eventually, soon, we will kick, kick in, we'll click, and we're going to do what we're doing. Even though I feel the squad is thin, we've already got into the whole transfer window thing. I don't want to hear about PSR. That's madness because we were willing to spend 70, 75 or whatever we was for Mark Gerhi, which is wild to me. Wasting time on that. I don't know what's going on upstairs. or it's, That's madness. That's two windows in a row with no significant signings. Don't want to hear the PSR, PSR bullshit. Something ain't right. But as it stands, you know how football goes. If you're winning or results ain't so bad, no one really ain't going to talk about all those stuff. It's so when things start going bad, believe you're going to start hearing all the talks about transfers and all this. And, and I just hope it don't get to that or get toxic. We had a long time of that under Ashley. And I don't want that to creep in now, especially after we've got a new regime, all the positivity. It's like, damn, Amanda, at least you got some deals over the line. I've got things done. But all of a sudden, no signings, no significant ones. Yes, Lewis Hall was a signing, but we already sorted it out from last year. Like Kelly came in as a significant signing, that was for free. 
So I don't know what we're really doing here. But three games in, two wins, one draw. Each game, you can see we kind of went through adversity and we got through it. Kind of got away with one against Bournemouth. The Southampton game weren't great. We were down to 10 men, but we got through it. But to beat Spurs, and I wasn't confident of beating them. The first half was it was okay. It's just one or two moments. We hit the crossbar. Spurs had their moments, the little free balls and that. But we were cool. But as soon as that delay with the referee or the assistant that had a little injury or whatever, Spurs just came out peppering second half. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And I genuinely thought, after that equaliser, I said, yeah, this is it. It was coming. 77 Sutton minute. As I, as I said before, Angie's ridiculously high line. Newcastle, I think that was a kind of a game plan. Same on as before in the last couple of games. You know what? You'll find your moment. The attack, our attacking Barnes's goal was, I think, was underrated. His finish was beautiful. And it's for me, the defense is a bit, mm, but we're hanging in there. But it's our attacks that's going to be the most important for us as it stands at the moment. The high line gives us opportunities just to get that one moment right. We did it. And it was late in the game. And it was squeaky bum times because I was thinking Spurs are going to be angry. They're going to keep peppering, peppering. But we held on. 2-1. Some may call it paper over the cracks. Fuck it. Results are result. And as Eddie House says, if you get results like this, and we not play particularly well, we all admit that. The players admit that as well. Isaac came out and admitted that. It's key. If you can get results like this, we can't get any worse, surely. So we can only get better. And lo and behold, long may it continue. My only concern is the squad depth. Love to hear your thoughts. I'm Jordy Dread, and we keep it moving. On to the next piece.